Hello, we're back. After having one of the most amazing cards of the year, we're now <laughs> got one of the worst cards of the year. So yeah, a bit of a change, but you know, it is what it is. Start with the first fight of the night, which I think is going to be James Liontorp versus Chris Padilla. It doesn't have it on the schedule, but it's the most recent fight that's just been added. And I just, I'm literally just coming off watching uh, Lalontop or uh, versus Padilla. Uh, I'm watching their fight. So I, I watched Padilla's loss against Jason Gonzalez. He was very scrappy in that fight. He's a very fun fighter, what I've seen. He's very violent. Uh, and Lalontop, he's pretty decent, but I don't think he's going to go too far. But I do think he is going to be Chris Padilla. I think he has a grappling edge in this fight. But also, I can just see him chinning Chris Padilla. I expect this to be a really fun fight. I don't have high hopes for either guy going too far in the division. But, you know, with the short notice nature and everything, I'm just going to, going into the inside factors here. I'm going to take Lontop. I just think he's going to be better prepared for this fight. Now, Chris Padilla was booked for a fight, so maybe... You know, he's definitely going to be in shape, I'd imagine, but I just, I think Lontop's got this one done. He knew he was fighting on this date. He's been preparing for this date. The weight cut's all prepared and everything like that. Badia's been a welterweight, so maybe this is a bit too much, you know, quick of a weight cut for him. I'm not sure. But I'm going to, I'm going to take Lontop here, and I'm going to say by TKO, I think you can TKO him on the ground. So, so I'm going to take that fight. Then we have Ivana Petrovic versus Lian Nang. Uh, Ivana Petrovic looked really bad against Liana Casalona, Carolina, which is never a good look for a women's fighter because Luana Carolina isn't really like a great fighter. She's not like a high tier type fighter, you know. So I am going to take Lian Nang. I know she has never won a fight in the UFC, I believe, but she actually didn't look too bad against JJ Aldridge. She was looking good. She was holding her own in there. And JJ Aldridge is like a decent woman fighter. I know that's like sort of MMA math, but when it comes to women's MMA, it's sometimes you just got to fucking flip a coin and go with what you know. And what I know is, you know, Lian Nang seems to be improving. And yeah, I'm going to take Lian Nang in this fight. She's gotten a lot of opportunities, so I can't imagine she's going to fucking lose this one as well. So yeah, I'm, I'm taking Lian. No, I got this one done. Uh, then we have Gabriel Benitez versus... Ayasa Mahashate. Now, this is another interesting fight, but I'm going to take Mahashate here. Uh, he didn't look great. He's, he hasn't looked great his last few fights, but he did knock out Steve Garcia, which is a really good win. You know, that's a really well-aged win. Uh, outside of that, he did lose to Rafa Garcia, but it's Rafa Garcia. He's not like a horrible fighter by any means. So I'm not going to hold that too much against him. And then he lost to Valashev, Boroshev, Slava Claus. But that was a pure striking fight. Not many people are going to beat Slava Claus uh, in just pure striking. You know, you're normally going to have to shoot a takedown on him. Uh, and this was just pure st striking. So I'm not going to hold it too much against him. Gabriel Benitez, you know, is a good fighter. He's a veteran, but he has taken a lot of damage. He's been chinned a lot of times. His chin isn't really known for being too grand net at this point. Chinned by Sadiq Yusuf. Lost to Omar Morales, which is a horrible look. Chinned by Benny Quarantillo. Chinned by David Onama. Got, just got rear naked choked by Jim Miller. Uh, was getting beat up a little bit by Charlie Ontiveros in their fight. He had to start shooting takedowns. So maybe he's going to turn into a wrestler in this fight, but I think Mahashate gets this one done. Uh, then moving up the card, we have Manik Mann versus Caitlin, Caitlin Souza. I don't even remember who the fuck Manik Mann is. She fought Knutson. Her name's, oh, her nickname's The Sword of Savage. Where's she out of? She's out of Montana. Who the fuck's Ketlin Souza? I don't even remember who these women are, man. Like, I'm not, I'm not even exaggerating here. Who the fuck are they? Okay. 
I'm gonna take... Oh my god, how do I even pick this fight, man? Like, generally, how do I pick this? I don't know. I don't know, guys. Uh, I know I do my research, but like... Uh, I'm gonna take... I'll take Ketlin Souza. Uh, losing to Kareem Silva is not like horrible. Uh, and she does seem to be a striker. And, you know, man got chinned by Bruno Brazil, who's not like a amazing fighter in her own right. So, yeah, I'm going to take... I'll take... I'll take... Souza here to get this one done by TKO. Or decision. Probably a decision, let's be real. Uh, but yeah, what a hard fight to predict. I really didn't remember any of these women. I'm not going to lie to you guys. Apologize for that. Then we're Dontel Mays versus Kyle Machado. Oh my god, this is a fucking... This is a hard card to predict. Because like, this is a really low tier card. Like, this is generally not a... This isn't a card full of, you know, high tier talent. And I don't mean this to offend anyone, but this is a region. This is like a regional tier when it comes to like these fights. I'll take... I think I'll take Dontel Mace though. He is pretty good. I think he can outstrike Machado. Uh, well, he's not very good. He's not, but he's a heavyweight. He's an unranked heavyweight, but he's got moments of greatness sometimes. You know, he had a somewhat competitive fight against Cyril Garn. Uh, I think he can beat up Machado on the feet here. I don't think Machado can take him down or anything like that. So I'm going to take Dante Mays to get this one done. Uh, but who knows? These are, when, when it comes to these fat heavyweights, who knows? One of them could just randomly... You know, Dante Mays, this is the same guy who fucking was humping Josh Prusian's face. So maybe he's going to get Kyle Machado on the ground, get him in judo side control... Uh, get his crotch in his face and just start thrusting until Kyle Machado taps out. That is generally a possibility. It's not even an exaggeration, but I will take Dante Mays in this fight. Then we have Austin Hubbard versus Michelle, F Michelle Figlak. See, this is another hard fight. Uh, I guess Figlak's been out for a bit. He lost to Fressi Zamba. That's, that's actually not a bad loss because Fressi Zamba's like on the best run of his career so far. Uh, and Figlak's much younger than Hubbard. He's probably been out improving, I'd imagine. He's been training, you know. I think he was injured for a bit, but I'm sure he's been working a lot of stuff. Uh, I'm going to take Figlak. It's a shot in the dark here, but I think Figlak does have, you know, enough to beat Austin Hubbard. I don't rate Austin Hubbard too highly, so I'm going to go Figlak here. Then we have Ronnie Yaya versus Victor Henry. I'm going with Victor Henry here. Uh... Ronnie Yaya is very one-dimensional. He is only just a grappler. He can't... He's got zero TKO wins. He can't... His striking's not really that great. And Victor Henry's a catch wrestler. He's got really good grappling. Good takedown defense. Granite chin. We don't have to really worry about a striking threat from Yaya here. But I think Victor Henry can sort of just, like, push forward and beat up Ronnie Yaya. So that's how I'm going to take this fight. I think he's actually going to chin Ronnie Yaya in this fight. So yeah, I'm going Victor Henry. I know he's not the youngest guy, but compared to Ronnie Yaya, he's like a fucking spring chicken. So yeah, I'm taking Victor Henry to get this one done. Then we have Tim Means versus Uros Medic. Another interesting fight on this card. 10 year age gap uh, between these two. Uros Medic, you know, coming off that loss to Orobak Orobai uh, on short notice, you know, completely different style of fighter. He was meant to fight Johnny Parsons, then he gets his fucking... Kurji Monster, who is a fucking really good grappler. Like, that's honestly, like, fucking crazy different level of opponents. You know, Johnny Parsons, one-dimensional Muay Thai fighter. Uh, and then, yeah, then you get a fucking grappling ace. I'm going to take Urosh Medic to beat Tim Means. I know Tim Means is coming off an amazing performance, but it's Andre Fili. Not Fili. Fucking hell, I do that every time. Andre Fialho. And the thing is, Andre Fialho, I think we've got to realize, just isn't that great. He's very chinny. He's been chinned that many times now. Like, he's definitely got CTE, like, respectfully. He's taken that much damage his last few fights. Uh, hopefully, he can bounce back on the regional scene eventually. But, like, 
yeah, I'm taking I'm taking Oros Medic to get this one done. I think he can chin Tim Means, which will be sad to see, but I think he's a much better striker. Maybe Tim Means will try and mix up the grappling, but I think Oros Medic is good. Isn't a bad gr defensive grappler. I just think Oroback you know, caught him off guard. Probably, I can't imagine he was preparing for takedowns against Johnny Parsons. That, you know, Johnny Parsons has never really shot a fucking takedown, I don't feel like. So, you know, it was a completely different matchup, but I'm going to be taking Oros match to get this one done by KO. Then we have Jonathan Pierce versus David Onama. Now, this is actually a really tricky one to predict because Onama is very powerful, but Jonathan Pierce doesn't just go out there and get chinned. And he's also, at the same time, he's got good cardio. He's got good pressure. And I'm actually going to take Jonathan Pierce here. I think Jonathan Pierce is a tough matchup for David Onama. Uh, Onama's powerful. He's got a long reach and everything like that. But he does gas. And Jonathan Pierce is sort of similar to Nate Landwehr, except I feel like he is a bit more durable. Maybe not as good, but he's a lot more durable. He's got the same sort of style. And I think he can survive the onslaught from Onama. I think he can get his grappling going. And I think he is going to win this fight by just sort of breaking Onama. We've seen Onama can be broken a little bit. I think we're just going to, it's going to be all pressure, all cardio, all grappling from Jonathan Pierce here. And I think he is going to be able to get the victory here over David Onama. And I'm going to probably go by decision though. I don't think he'll finish him, but I think he can take him down, beat him up. Uh, like I say, survive getting chinned in the first round, and then after Onama probably blows his load a little bit, I think Pierce will beat him up and get a decision, maybe even a 10 a in there somewhere. But yeah, that's how I'm going. I'm going John from Pierce to get this one done. Then we have Austin Lane versus Jehonta Dinez. Dinez, former glory kickboxer, very good striker. I'm going to go with Jehonta Dinez here. Austin Lane, you know... He's coming off a knockout loss. He's been chinned in all of his losses, I believe. I could be wrong on that. I just know he's been chinned a lot. Got chinned by Greg Hardy. Got chinned by Justin Tuffer. And I think this big, decently athletic... He, he is actually a, not like a... He's not just a fat heavyweight, right? Or, you know, he's, he's in somewhat decent shape for a heavyweight, I'd say. He's a powerful guy. He's a good striker. I think he's going to smoke Austin Lane here. I'm actually really confident in this. I'm excited for this guy. I really am. We're getting a glory kickbox or a heavyweight. Fucking sign me up. Let's get this guy on a fucking roll. Like, this is a good prospect. I don't think Austin Lane has a really high ceiling by any means. So, you know, I'm not just... I'm not saying Joe Hunt is going to beat him and then he's gone off to the championship or anything like that. But I think this is a good fight for him. I think he can chin Austin Lane. So I'm going to go Jahanta Dinez by first round KO. Then we have Ariana Lipsky versus Kareen Silva. Now, this is an interesting one. You know, Lipsky's on a really good run at the moment. Should be Gato, JJ Aldrich, Casey O'Neill. Uh, who the fuck? I'm not sure. Did she win that fight as well? Uh, hold on a sec. I need to check. Is she on like she's on a three or four fight winning streak? Three. Okay, she lost to Priscilla Cachoeira, which is a horrible look. And then now she's fighting Kareen Silva, who's a very good grappler. This is a pretty interesting fight. She did beat Souza. I'm gonna go Kareen Silva. I think she can sub Ariana Lipsky. I. I don't know. I just see her subbing a. I have a dead leg right now. I've been seeing like I'm back in school. It's really, really awkward. It's like pins and needles. But uh, she, actually, she's never even been subbed. What am I on about? I'm like misremembering. This is tough, man. Kareem Silver is really good, and she is a submission. She's got good submissions, but Lipsky doesn't really get subbed, but there's always a first time for everything in women's MMA. I'm gonna, yeah, you know what? Fuck it, she's got really good submissions. She's got some KOs as well. I'm gonna take, I'm taking Kareen Silva. I think she's gonna get this one done. By submission over Ariana Lipsky. I could be wrong, I could be right. That's just the name of the game. Then we move on to our co-main event. What the fuck? This is the co-main event. This card is awful, guys. Sorry, moving back. 
This is an awful, awful card. Ryan Spann versus Bogdan Guskov. He's the co-main event. This is a hard one to predict, to be honest. This generally is a hard one to predict. Because, yeah, Bogdan Guskov is coming off a win, but he beat, you know, Zach Poyonga. Does that really mean he'll beat Ryan Spann? They really want that fucking Anthony Smith versus Ryan Spann trilogy, hey, because... Literally, he's been, he comes off fighting Anthony Smith. Now he's fighting a guy who looks exactly like him. <sighs> Interesting fight. I'm going to go Ryan Spann, though. I think Ryan Spann will win this fight. I don't rate Guskov too highly. Uh, you know, he got Volkan Ustamir on his debut, which is pretty rough go of things, but I don't think he's like that particularly great. I think... I think Ryan Spann can club and sub him. That's what I'm going to go. I'm going to go, he drops Guskov with a 1-2 up the middle. And then as Guskov goes to get back up, he gets caught in a modified guillotine by Ryan Spann. And then Ryan Spann wins by sub. But Ryan Spann is very chinny, so he could get chinned here. But I'm going to say he does beat Guskov. But we'll see what happens. Guskov getting some weird fights, right? Why is he getting like... Fucking Vulcan Ustamir in his debut. I know that was short notice, but now he's like getting right back in there against Ryan Spann. Like, what the fuck? Then we have Mateus Nikolaou, the main event. Mateus Nikolaou versus Alex Perez. Holy fuck, I gotta stop sitting like this. It's like I'm back in school. Oh my god. Why is my body so numb? But anyway, speaking of being numb, we got the main event. Mateus Nikolaou versus Alex Perez. I, unfortunately, uh, not unfortunately, what am I talking about? I go on Mateus Nikolaou. I don't really rate Alex Perez too highly. I never have. That's why I don't even rate McCarthy beating him that well. Like, he didn't even beat him that good, but I'm going to go Mateus Nikolaou by KO in this fight. Alex Perez, you know, He's never really been, like, particularly that great, in my opinion. Uh, he normally gets subbed, but I think, you know, Nikolaou is a really good striker. So I do think he is going to be able to chin Alex Perez, you know. What's the age difference, too? I think he's the younger man here, only by a year. Perez has been fighting for a long time. How long has Nikolaou been fighting? Since 2010. Oh, they've both been fighting for a very long time. Uh... But yeah, I'm gonna take I'm taking Nikolaou here. I think he this is just his fight to lose, to be honest. Like if he loses, it's gonna be because he makes a mistake, not because Perez is like really that particularly that great. I know that sounds insulting to Alex Perez, but I just think Nikolaou wins this fight most times out of ten. He's a much better striker. Perez isn't like a really great grappler. I don't think he's gonna be able to go in there and like take down Nikolaou or anything like that. And I think most times out of 10 against Roy Val, Nikolaou's going to give him a more tough fight. You know, he did get caught in that fight, but I don't think that happens most times out of 10, getting caught with a knee out of nowhere and getting chinned. So I'm going to take Mateus Nikolaou to get this one done. And yeah, like I say, I'm going to have him win this by keep KO slash TKO. So yeah, there you go. That They're my predictions for the UFC fight night. <sighs> Mateus Nikolaou versus Alex Perez. What a horrible, horrible card on paper. But all these, hey, like they say, these cards that look horrible on paper always turn out to be the banger cards. So, yeah, let's hope that's the case here. But, yeah, thank you so much for watching this videos, And uh, let me know if you've noticed anything different in these videos or the quality. Anyway, peace. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.